teaching on Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So remember, he's addressing a brethren of a local church. He can be addressing a specific individual, a brother in Christ. Generally, where it's brethren, it's speaking to a group. So it is definitely speaking to save people within a local church. But of course, every individual makes up a local church, and only the saved make up the body of Christ. However, in the body or in the local church, there could be both saved and unsaved. And uh, you don't know who is and who isn't. All you know is whether or not you are. <laughs> and uh, sometimes you might even doubt that, depending upon how you live from week to week. But uh, but he's he's addressing saved people of a local church. So he says, brethren. Now notice it's a hypothetical situation. It's not a it's not a thing that's necessarily going on, but he knows that within every local church, problems arise. Uh, he dealt with Galatians chapter 5, the works of the flesh, and he's talking to save people. So obviously, save people can commit any one of the sins out of the 18 things mentioned there in uh, Galatians 5, 19 down through 21. Uh, so, you know, a man can be overtaken by those works of the flesh, and brother, there's some nasty ones in there. Yeah. And I say, which one's the worst? I, I don't know. I, I mean, there's some, there's some bad ones in there. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't want to be putting on a, a scale. It's like saying which fruit of the spirit is best. Yeah, right. You know, I, I just I don't think you want to start grading them out. Yeah. But uh, but I do believe that a Christian can commit any sin an unsaved person can commit. Yeah. Make no mistake about it. Any Christian can commit any sin an unsaved person can commit. Yeah. And no sin that you commit after you're saved undoes what Christ did on Calvary. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now, when you commit a sin and you commit enough sins that uh, really people start to question your salvation, you might want to just make sure, number one, that you're saved. Number two, you know how to repent and get it right. Yeah, right. And don't continue on in the mess you're in. Um, and so, but long before you get there, generally long before you get overtaken by the works of the flesh and verses 19 through 21, uh, generally there's a fault in your life, okay? Now, again, a fault is not a sin. It doesn't have to be a sin. Uh, that, that Greek word I couldn't remember last week is paraptoma, paraptoma. And it's translated 23 times in the King James Bible, that Greek word. And uh, only a handful, three times, James 5.16, Galatians, uh, only twice, sorry, Galatians, uh, James 5.16 there and Galatians 6.1. Only uh, twice is that word, that Greek word, translated as fault. Every other time, it's either sin, sins, sinned, or trespass or trespasses. So, a fault can be a sin. A fault can be a trespass, but it doesn't have to be. Okay. So it works like this: long before you start messing around with adultery, there in verse nineteen, Galatians five, you might have a wandering eye. You might have a problem with what channels you've got on the TV. Now, I'm not saying throw out your TV. I'm just saying the channels you have that you watch, that might be a fault that continues on long enough into a sin that manifests itself in the flesh as any one of those things there in the list. 19, adultery, fornication, and clean lasciviousness. Those four things there, don't just, you don't just wake up one morning and think, today is a good day to one of those four things. It generally starts out with, what are you listening to? What are you watching? Who's your friends? You see what I'm saying? Where are you hanging out? It's not wrong to go to a, 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 a birthday party. But it's not breaking out the booze and you know breaking out all the dirty jokes. You see what I'm saying? The fault might be to go. I mean, that's a fault to go. But it ain't a sin unless you start participating practicing and continuing in it, yeah, yeah. not leaving. You see how that thing works yeah. out? Do it long enough, and you'll be a Christian that commits any one of the sins right. that the unsaved commit. Yeah. Okay? So a fault um, doesn't have to be a sin because it's not always translated as sin, but it can become a sin if you hang around it long enough. Uh, I was talking to Mom about this before, and uh, last week, last Wednesday night, and you know a fault line is a thing that runs through the earth, yeah. right? Yeah. A fault line isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's there, right? But it becomes a bad thing 
when the plates start doing a thing and it becomes an earthquake. Yeah, right. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A fault in and of itself ain't a bad thing. Yeah. But when it turns into an earthquake, <laughs> then you got a problem. Then you got a problem. Yeah. And you don't hang, you don't deal with a fault until you have to deal with it. There's a lot of undercurrent things that are faults in our life. They're character flaws. You wake up too late. You sleep in. You hit the snooze button. That just might be a character flaw, a fault. Do it long enough. Don't correct it when it's presented to you. Like you're reading Proverbs, and it says, you know, uh, a slothful man is one that turns over in his bed like a door on its hinges. When God hits you with that verse, you think to yourself, wait a second, snooze, snooze, snooze. Why am I snoozing? I'm staying up too late. Why am I staying up too late? I'm watching things on TV. Why am I watching it? They all become faults that begin to pile on top of each other. Before you know it, you're just a Cheeto-eating Christian. I can't get to church on time. Now, it might be a fault not to go, but it becomes a sin when I'm up too late watching TV. What are you watching? None of your business. I got grace and liberty. Okay, why aren't you up in time for Sunday school? I stayed up too late. Why? I was watching TV. Why? You see what I'm saying? A lot of Christians make a lot of excuses. They're just faults that compound into an earthquake. Yeah, yeah. And you know what you want to say when there's an earthquake? Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Oh, amen. That's, what, that's, what that, that's what that Philippian jailer said. Amen. God brought, you know what I believe is? I believe God, when he created heaven and earth, in Genesis 1 1, or. Okay, gap theory possibly. But, you know, Genesis 1 there. He creates heaven and earth. And I believe when God created heaven and earth, he ran a fault line all the way down through into Philippi. God saw, what, 4,000 years, four and, four and a quarter, down the road into Philippi where a man would be sitting in a jail. Yeah. That fault didn't bother anybody. It didn't bother that Philippian jailer. Didn't bother Paul and Silas until one day there's an earthquake. Yeah. Right. Now when there's an earthquake, the right thing to do isn't to try to pretend like there's no earthquake there. Yeah. That Philippian jailer was woke up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was shook up. Yeah. And you know what he said? Sirs, what must I do to be saved? There's a lot of Christians that don't have enough sense of a lost Philippian jailer to when there's an earthquake in your life, there's things happening in your life, you don't understand why they're happening. You might want to ask, what have I done? What must I... Start asking questions. Mm -hmm. Lord, is there any fault in me? Is there a sin problem in me? Don't start pointing everybody else. Yeah, amen. Start looking here. What have I done? Right, amen. We're too busy looking at what have they done. No, look at what have you done. Amen. See? Not doing that might be a fault. That becomes a sin. Amen. Don't ask that question long enough and you'll find out just how proud you are. Amen. That might be in the list somewhere in some form or another. Emulations, endings. Oh, yeah, it's there. All right, now look at Hebrews chapter 12. Let me show you how this thing plays into uh, this word fall. See how it, how it plays out from being one thing to another. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. I think you know the verse, but Hebrews 12, verse 1. He says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, comma, and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that set before us. How is it that sin so easily besets us? Again, it's not like you're not saved. It's not like you don't know better. It's not like you don't have the Holy Spirit. It's not like you don't have a Bible. It's not like you don't have a prayer life unless you don't. What's going on? Why is it that I'm so easily beset by sin? Well, could it be that before the comma, before the progression off into that besetting sin, sin, we had something hanging about us called a weight? Yeah, amen. What's a weight? It might be a fault. Okay. That weight there might be a fault. There might be some things about you that are character flaws. Their weights, their faults in your life. And you don't always know that they're there until one day it rears an ugly head. Maybe it starts out as a tremor. And you ignore it. But maybe eventually it becomes an earthquake. And you should not ignore that. 
And those are the besetting sins. But it starts out with a weight. What's a weight? It could just it could just be going back for seconds. It could just be a little extra on the plate for dessert and a little less salad. Talking about food right now. Because we're all we all we all eat. Unless we got some aliens in here. <laughs> we all eat, okay? And uh, and so there could be some weight <laughs> that we need to trim off because because it becomes a besetting sin. What's the besetting sin? It works like this. It's a weight because you don't know how to say no. And we all struggle with not saying no. So the weight there, the fault there is that it's not a sin to like food, to enjoy food. I like food. I'll tell you, I like restaurants. It's not a fault to enjoy a meal, but it would be a fault if it works like this. You you have enough money to spend on all these extravagant meals, but you never have any money to help out in the local church. Yeah, amen. Or let's just forget the church and say, you don't have enough money to buy your kid new shoes. Or enough money to take a trip somewhere. Enough money to put groceries on the table in the house because you're too busy eating McDonald's or fast food or unhealthier food out somewhere else. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It can be, a, your spending habits can be a fault. Yeah. How you spend money, where you invest your money could just be a fault that eventually it landslides into a sin. And these, But you can take this idea and apply it to so many different areas in our life and then we think it's just the devil. The besetting sin is the devil. He showed up one day and the, devil, the temptation so strong. I think long before the devil started talking to Eve in the garden there, I think she was walking by that tree and looking at it. Hanging around the truth doesn't say it there. You're right, I'm reading into a text that's not there. But generally, with temptation, it's not like the first time I see it, I got to go and get it. True. Yeah. It's generally a thing that's, that I'm hanging around. Yeah. I'm looking at. Yeah. When I'm watching the TV and I see the commercial, maybe the first time I quickly change the channel. Yeah. Next time I'm like, now I change the channel. Yeah. Before you know it, I'm watching the whole thing. This is, how, this is how sin works. And then we say, well, the, the devil made me do it. Did he? I mean, he made the temptation there. He certainly enabled you. He certainly excited your flesh. But it was you and your flesh that gave you the problem. And the world puts it out and the flesh takes it in. And the devil makes sure there's nothing to hinder it. Yeah, yeah it is human nature, brother. It's been that way since the fall of Adam. So a fault is a weight that if we don't uh, lay it aside, that's what it says, right? Lay aside every weight and the sin. So there's some faults that are weights we got to lay aside, but then there are some sins that are just blatant, flat-out sins that we got to stop. We just have to stop. And, and here's how you don't stop it. I got grace. I got liberty. I'm a king's kid. Can't lose my salvation. Or you find ways to, well, we're not in the Old Testament. Well, thank God we're not. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, I ain't got time for it right now, but you know what they do with faults in the Old Testament? Yeah, man. A fault is as bad as a sin in the Old Testament. You better thank, be thankful we are dispensationalists, rightly yeah, dividers. Yeah. It wouldn't be a one of us left, man. Right. First time you went for seconds and God told you not to, it's over with. It's it. You know, you start prepping. You got the man to save for the next thing going on. Yeah. That thing turns the worms, man. That's yeah. no good. So there are some faults that become sin. And the best thing to do is lay aside the weight, the fault, when, it, when, when it's presented to you by another brother or sister in Christ or by the Holy Spirit. Or if it becomes that sin, confess it, get it under the blood, and lay that aside likewise. Um. Go to uh, Exodus 5. Now, here's what, here, that word paraptoma, and again, I'm not a Greek scholar, I'm, I'm butchering the word, but paraptoma, uh, here's what it means, uh, that word, that Greek word, here's what it means. A, slide, a side slip, a lapse or deviation. That is unintentional. So there are unintentional Errors that we make. They're not intentional errors. They're not intentional things that we do. They're just unintentional errors. Or it's a willful transgression. It's a fall, a fault, 
an offense, a sin, or trespass. It can be any one of those things. A fall, a fault, an offense, a sin, a trespass that is either unintentional or intentional. Webster's 1828 Dictionary defines it further in the English. It's an error, a mistake, a blunder. I want you to catch this word, a blemish, a defect, an impairment of excellence, impairment in discernment, imperfection, defection, neglect of duty, inattention to detail, or lack of prudence. That word fault covers a lot of ground. Yeah. So that's why sometimes when they hit that word, they translate it as fault. Other times they translate it as trespass or sin. Is because it covers a lot of ground. Right. Okay? And the Christian will have to discern whether or not this is a sin or whether it's a fault. That's why you have to have a spirit of meekness when you approach another brother who's overtaken in a fault. Okay. Uh, did I tell you Exodus 5? Yeah. Yeah. Alright, here's the first time it's mentioned in the Bible. Exodus 5, 16. I always try to give you the first time a word is mentioned. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Exodus 5, 16. There is no straw given unto thy servants, and they say to us, Make brick. And behold, thy servants are beaten, but the fault is in thine own people. Yeah. So what they're saying is, you're not giving us anything to make the bricks with. You're beating us to death. And uh, we can't make it fast enough. And then you beat us for not making it fast. The fault is with you people. Right. Ain't that the way it is in the world today? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but there's the word fault. The fault is with, their, with them. Now that's the first time it shows up. The Greek word there, or the Hebrew word is kata. I don't know if I'm butchering the word, but kata. That word kata in the Hebrew is translated, is, in, is found in the Hebrew Bible 239 times. Wow. <laughs> Only once is it translated fault. So when you get the guys that want to correct the King James Bible and throw shade on the King James Bible, and they say, well, every other time that Greek word paraptomo was translated trespass or sin, and the King James translators, it's unfortunate they didn't correctly translate it the way it should have been. Well, 239 times the word kata is translated, 238 out of the 239, is translated as something different than the word fault. But you know what every new Bible does? They translate that, they translate that word kata as fault. They all translate the word as fault there, even though it's only translated once that way. And that's how you're keen you got to be consistent if you're going to be consistent. Amen. Good point. If you're, if you're straining at a gnat for the two times they did it for the Greek word, how about the 238 times it was never translated as fault, but the one time the translators did translate it as fault, all the other Bibles did as well. Yeah, right. What's with that? Yeah. They're not consistent yeah. in, their, in their accusations. Look at uh, Deuteronomy 25. <laughs> now, again, I say every other, not every modern Bible is going to hold to the same standard. they got to have so many percentage. Was it, was it, Brother John, how many percentage was it to change it? Copyright? 33% or something. 33%? Yeah. Is that your brother-in-law told me it's been reduced to 3 It used to be 10%. Oh. It used to be 10 but it's oh. now to 3%. Is that what you said, Steve? It's been lowered, yeah. It's been lowered to 3 So 3% of the text has to be changed to get the copyright. So it depends on how much uh, they want to change. All right, uh, and it's been changed so many times. Right? Deuteronomy 25. And what? so what you do is because the word fault in the Hebrew or Greek, um, uh, uh, because there's so many definitions, so many ways to translate the word, all they got to do is keep changing it to, to not keep, to, to you know, to yeah. keep up with the 3%, right? It's just, it's convenience on their part. Deuteronomy 25. This is the second time it's mentioned. Deuteronomy 25, verse 2. And it shall be, if the wicked man be worthy to be beaten, that the judge shall cause him to lie down and to be beaten before his face according to his fault. Why aren't you thankful you don't have to deal with that? Galatians 6, 1. Brethren, from man be overtaken with a fault, drag him to the front of the church and beat him. <laughs> Lay him down and beat him to death. Uh, some churches you might want to practice that. I don't know, but uh, not here. Amen? Amen. Uh, no, thank you. But by a certain number. But there's the word fault there. Mm -hmm. Now that word, that Hebrew word, is not the same Hebrew word that was back there in Genesis or Exodus. This Hebrew word is called Risha, R-I-S-H-A-W. A lot of these end in A-W. That Hebrew word Risha is translated 15 times 
but only once is it translated as fault. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's All right. Uh, go to 1 Samuel 29. Hmm. Here's what I'm trying to show you. The King James translators got it right. Yeah, he has. <laughs> you say you're going to great lengths. Yeah, because they go to great lengths to deceive. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it's nice to have a little ammunition. Yeah. It's nice to have not just one in your chamber, but six, seven, eight yeah. if you can. Yeah. Have enough in there to be able to blow them out of the water. Look at uh, 1 Samuel 29. The first mention, it was a Hebrew word, kata. The second time, it was a Hebrew word, rishta. Here's the third mention, 1 Samuel 29. Verse uh, number 3. Then said the princes of the Philistines, What do these Hebrews hear? And Achish said unto the princes of the Philistines, Is not this David, the servant of Saul, the king of Israel, which hath been with me these days or these years? And I have found no fault in him since he fell unto me this day. Now this Hebrew word is meuma. Here's the A-W again. Meuma. It's the third different Hebrew word. Three different Hebrew words all translated as the word fault. This Hebrew word, now I like this one because this one's connected to David. This Hebrew word, meuma, is used 33 times. Oh. David's a type of Christ. Yeah, yeah. And you know what they said about Jesus Christ on Calvary when uh, they crucified him? I find no fault in this oh, man. Amen. Jesus yes. Christ being 33 years old when he dies. David yeah. is a type of Christ. 33 times this word, uh, meuma, is used. And, um, and uh, only once, only once is that word translated as fault. Now, how come out of 33 times, only once is it translated as fault, and it's used exactly the way you'd want it to be used to keep your typology intact? Yeah. Yeah. In other words, why didn't it say, I find no trespass in this man? Right. It didn't say that. No. I found no sin in this man. It didn't say that. It didn't say any other ways you could have translated that Hebrew word. It said fault. Do you know why? Because when you get down, where is it? Uh, look at, uh, hold your hold your finger in first hand and look at uh, Luke 23. Watch this. Hold your finger in first hand. Look at Luke 23. There's only three men in the Bible that, that it says there was no foul, fault found in them. Now we know David was a sinner. Yeah, amen. Amen? Yeah, amen. Uh, in fact, uh, when Achish said I found no fault in this man, uh, he didn't realize it, but David mm -hmm. lied to him. Uh, David goes and kills a bunch of his uh, countrymen, and they say, "Where? How, how did you get all the spoil?" And David says, "Oh, I killed some of my own people." Right. And he's like, "Wow, he's really going to be hated by the Jews now. He's really on our side." And here's Achish thinking, "I found no fault in this man." David lied to Achish because he killed Achish's uh, countrymen, but he had to kill them all—men, women, and children. So nobody could say it was David that did it, right. because David said it was the Jews that I killed and stole their stuff. So here's, here's Achish saying, I found a fault in this man. Well, he probably could have found some fault oh, in him. Yeah. So when he says it about David, it's not all necessarily true. But what about this man, Luke 23? Look at verse 4, Luke 23, 4. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. Now, I didn't say trespass. Yeah, amen. This is a Greek word that is... Um, a-I-T-I-O-N, A-T-I-O-N, -A 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 and it means crime or cause. I find no cr crime, I find no cause. Why did the translators translate it that way? Mm. Different Greek word than the one that we saw in Galatians, yeah. Peritoma. Why did they translate it as fault? It's not like, it's not like Luke and, and Samuel got together and said, hey, translators, uh, here's what you should do. You should keep the typology in effect. Luke and Samuel were not contemporaries with each other. No, I know. Mm -hmm. One wrote Greek and one wrote Hebrew. Yeah. Uh, do you think the King James translators had a little inspiration, yeah, yeah. which just simply Job 28.2 means there, not breath, but understanding? Yeah, yeah. And, the, and the Holy Spirit gives me understanding? Yeah. Uh, it isn't like the bunch of, it isn't like their knowledge, their intellect, and their 
great knowledge of the Greek and Hebrew is what gave them the understanding. It was the Holy Spirit that gave right. these men the understanding to translate it over here as crime, over there as cause. But when it comes to Christ, the Holy Spirit, let's keep says keep the uh, the typology in effect. Listen, I don't even think. I don't think Luke, I don't think Samuel, and I don't think any of the King James translators were concerned about typology. That's left for us ignorant Baptists that need something to do. <laughs> I like typology. Most people can't even find typology. How do you mean typology? What do you mean Abigail's type of what are you talking about? Well, that just comes from putting some things together. Like I find no fault in this man. It's really nothing more than just that, looking at two things similar. Sure. But I don't think that they were thinking about that. No. The Holy Spirit gave them the insight they needed yes. to, to, yes. to, to get a hold of that thing. Look at um, look at John 18. John 18. Look at verse 38. John 18, 38. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And uh, when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said to them, I find in him no fault at all. Guess what? That's a different Greek word. And that Greek word is similar. It's like a root word, I guess. I don't know. But it's A-I-T-I-A. -I -I -A. And that could be translated as crime, accusations, case, or fault. And they translate it as fault. I don't know. Look at John 19. You say it's coincidence. I say it's the Holy Spirit. Yes, amen. John 19, look at verse 4. John 19, verse 4. He says, Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring forth unto you that you may know that I find no fault in him. So there it is again. Verse uh, number 6. When the chief priest therefore and the officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto him, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. There it is again. What are we saying? We're saying there was no fault in Jesus Christ. There was no sin, no crime, no accusation worthy of death, no trespass. There was nothing wrong with Jesus whatsoever. Yeah, amen. Uh, look at 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 3. Uh, that word there, miyuma, that was found 33 times, it means no speck, no blemish, no stain, no spot. Just out of coincidence. But the Bible talks about the blood of Christ right. was without spot or blemish. Yeah, yeah, right. uh, 2 Samuel chapter 3. Look at verse 8. 2 Samuel chapter 3 verse 8. This is the third mention in the Bible of that word fault. Then was Abner very wroth for the words of Ishbosheth, and said, Am I a dog's head, which against Judah do show kindness this day unto the house of Saul thy father? to his brethren and to his friends and have not delivered thee into the hand of David that thou charges me today with a fault concerning this woman. Now again, you could translate that as trespass if you wanted to, if they wanted to. It does mean trespass. It does mean crime. It does mean cause. It does mean accusation. This Hebrew word um, is, uh, is uh, uh, also miyuma. It's the same exact word. And it means no spot, no blemish, and uh, no stain. So it's very similar to the one we saw in 1 Samuel. Uh, look at uh, Psalm, 50, Psalm 59. Look at Psalm 59. Psalm 59. This is the fourth mention of it. And this is a different Hebrew word. It's your fourth different Hebrew word, all translated as fault. Psalm 59, look at verse 4. They run and prepare themselves without my fault. Awake to help me, and behold. Uh, this word is Avon. Kind of like that, uh, wasn't that like a makeup? Yeah, Avon? Avon. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that? Uh -huh. So you're putting on, when you're putting on makeup, you're putting on a fault, ladies. You use that Avon, if you sell the Avon, you're, you're selling a fault. A trespass. A sin. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I didn't name it Avon. I'm just saying. Wasn't that like a, is that like a, uh, a pyramid thing? 
Do you make money off of that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like it's like a, it's like a thing, right? Where you kind of a I don't know. Yeah. Now that word Avon is tra is a Hebrew word found 236 times. Only twice is it translated as fault. Only wow. twice is it translated as fault. Jesus. Why? The Lord had a purpose yeah, for it. Right, now look at Daniel. We're almost done. Look at Daniel chapter six. Daniel chapter six. Daniel chapter 6. we will be gone for two Wednesdays, so whoever's oh, got it, no. we keep it nice, short, and sweet. <laughs> but Daniel chapter 6, I just want to get this to you before, I, before we leave off. Daniel chapter 6, verse 4. Then the presidents, and I remember your Bible's written in um, uh, Greek and Hebrew, but there's a third language your Bible's written in. And uh, Daniel chapter 6, verse 4. Then the presidents and princes sought to find uh, occasion uh, against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Look at how both words are used there, error and fault. Mm. This almost defines for you what a fault is. Right. It's an error. Sure. Yeah. But they use the word error and they use the word fault. Right. Now, this is written in, in Chaldean or Aramaic. This is a different language. It's a Chaldean language. And, um, and the word here is a shekath. S-H-E-C-H-A-T-H. It's Chaldean. It could also be translated as corrupt or corruption. Okay? And uh, the Bible says he finds no occasion, nor fault, nor error uh, with Daniel. So that makes him a type of Christ, like David a type of Christ. And in fact, Daniel is a type of the Holy Spirit as well. So there's no error, there's no fault with the Holy Amen. Spirit. That's why your Bible is perfect. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit is the inspiration That's for right. those King James translators. And there's no error or fault in the translation Amen. or in the inspiration or in the Holy Spirit Amen. like Daniel. Okay? Um, and this word is only found twice. It's found here in Daniel 6 verse 4. So the word uh, occasion and the word error is not the same word as the word fault in right. the in the Chaldean language. All right, um, look at Daniel chapter two verse nine. Daniel chapter two verse nine. He says, "But if you will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you, for you have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me." Till the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know that you can show me the interpretation thereof. That word corrupt there is the same word as fault uh, in Daniel chapter 6, verse 4. So there they actually translate it as corrupt as opposed to fault. You know why I think the Holy Spirit led them to do that? It's because of all the corrupt manuscripts out there. Oh, amen. Hmm. <coughs> There's more than just the faults yeah, amen. with those manuscripts. Yeah. In fact, look at how this whole thing works. He says, you prepared lying yeah. and, corrupt. and corrupt words. Who are these guys? These are the leaders. These are the principal. These are the principal. These are the, the, the uh, astrologists. These are the principal men. These are your soothsayers. Yeah. These are your scientists. Lying corrupt words. A better rendering would be. Yeah. It's unfortunate that the oldest and best of this or that. What do you know about the oldest and best? Yeah. You know what that is? Those are lying and corrupt words. Amen. You've never seen the originals. <laughs> You've never seen the oldest Amen. and best. Huh? Amen. They never see them a day in their life. Mm -hmm. Now look what he says there. Therefore tell me the dream. And I shall know that you can show me the interpretation thereof. You know what those scholars can't do? They cannot give you the interpretation. No, amen. You know why? Because the Bible says the scriptures are of no private interpretation. Amen. You need something a whole lot better than a degree yes. to be able to interpret it. Amen. I don't have a Hebrew degree, a Greek degree. I wouldn't measure up to James Not James Knox, James White, or James LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what? I can, I can, I got a Google thing, and I've got a concordance, and I got all that. But I can take the King James text and just let it stand as it yeah, is, yeah. and pull more truth out of the plain, simple words right. 
of the English text in the King James Bible that those guys ever came trying to run back to the Utah or Keshaw or Rishaw or anything else. Amen. All that does is a little extra fun to play around with, like the 33. <laughs> but that ain't going to add to my faith in the King James Bible because I can pull that out of yeah. some Amen. Strong's Concordance somewhere. The Holy Spirit knew what he was That's doing right. when he Amen. put those words in there. Amen. I'll put it like to you like this way. I don't even know the King James translators all knew exactly how it was going to play out for us here in 2023. Right. Amen. I don't believe for a second they knew that tonight I'd be standing up and taking you back through this word and that word. But the Holy Spirit is yeah. not bound. Amen. The Word of God is not bound. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit knew that on a Wednesday night, some random Wednesday night in 2023, with a few of the folks gathered here tonight, he's going to have a little fun looking at some yeah. of these words and hopefully get you to understand that the word translated as fault in Galatians chapter 6 and in James chapter 5 is the correct translation Amen. regardless of whatever the other ones say. That's right. Amen. And no amount of original or running back to the Hebrew or the Greek are going to shed any greater light on it than if you just take it by faith That's and common it. sense. Amen. Oh, very good. A fault is a weight, but it can become a sin. Yeah. A fault is a weight that can become a sin. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what can become a weight. Intelligence. Yes. Intelligence, smarts, yes. ego, Knowledge can become a weight Amen. that turns into a sin. Yeah. The Bible says, knowledge puffeth up. Right. Mm -hmm. Charity edifies. Yeah. Knowledge puffeth up. Knowledge is a good thing. And him, and him, in Christ has hid all the wisdom and knowledge uh, and, and uh, sanctification there. In Christ, all the knowledge you need. So knowledge is a good thing to have. Yeah. It's good to have knowledge. But too much knowledge becomes a weight. Yeah. And it's a fault that becomes a sin. Amen. And you begin to try to correct God's words right. based on knowledge and intellect rather than taking God's words by faith. Amen. Charity edified. Amen. 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 Let's leave it there. Let's uh, close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you.